Hello everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. As ever, please subscribe, hit the notifications bell and you'll be, yes, you guessed it, notified when we have a new video. Okay, so this is a huge one. This is such a big question I get asked over and over again. There are videos springing up on a daily basis about this. How do we get really good low end? How do we get good low end separation? But more importantly, how do we get it to breathe? I remember a few years ago having Tim Palmer mix an album that I had produced and engineered. And I was really happy with my rough mixes. But when Tim sent back the final mixes, they were fantastic. He had all the same mid-range and above detail that I did. He also added some beautiful delay techniques, which I've since adopted, side-chaining delays. There's a whole video about that. You can check that out. But the biggest difference between our mixes was the low end. The low end was fantastic. Fantastic on tins. The kick was round and focused and just seemed to be coming right at me. And the bass seemed so massive and big without ever being boomy. So, of course, I called him up. I asked him a hundred questions. And the great thing was, because it was something I had originally produced and engineered myself, I knew what he was doing when he described it because I could open up my own session. Hence, why I'm doing this video. Important things to remember, when you're mixing live drums, they are very, very different from mixing, you know, addictive, trigger, easy drummer, where they've taken this very well-recorded, consistently played drum. The thing about live drums is they can be very, very dynamic, incredibly dynamic. So there's a lot of real extra stuff that goes into mixing a live kit, which you're not gonna get from mixing you know, a virtual bass and a virtual drum kit. So this stuff here is stuff you can apply to virtual instruments, but it's something that can be applied to live drums and live bass. Okay, so we're gonna look at three different approaches. The first one is mine, and that's me showing you a song that I mixed entirely in the box, and it's the kick and the bass guitar from that song. The song is called Love Me, I'm Rich. It's about a rich rock star and I wrote it. So check that one out. Secondly is Mr. Cameron Webb, and this is a punk rock song. Thirdly, last but no means least, there's a song from Auric Wild. This song from Auric Wild is Brendan Small's Galacticon. You might know Galacticon, and you might know Brendan Small even more from Metalocalypse. It was a massive cartoon, hilarious, and the music is fantastic. So check out the way Auric mixes in Logic, where he mixes the kick and bass guitar. Great techniques from him. So each of these songs have a different kind of energy. You've got like the completely over the top, queen inspired, mega kind of insane, seven minute prog rock Galacticon track. You've got a raw sounding rock track that I cut here in my studio, playing most of the, if not all of the instruments, I think all of the instruments. And then you've got the punk rock of Cameron. Three very different approaches, but three ways to show you how you can tame a live kick and a bass guitar and make them work really well together. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. Let's have a listen to the kicks. It's good, there's just a little stodginess. So let's find some of that 350 and pull it out. Already more definition. Let's go to good old fashioned 60. Lots of bomb men, too much. Now, 110, 100, 110 is always a problem for me on kick drums. There's a build up. There you go. And also the bass likes to live a little bit down there. And why not? Let's go to 7K. Whoops. Let's go to 7K. Oh, there you go. Now just for schnitz and schniggles, 
I'm gonna throw in my base. You know, that kick is pretty massive. If you want me to be really honest, I think I probably am gonna stick a transient designer on that now. Just make that just a little bit smaller. So you can control the sustain and the attack. Now put down a little bit. First, let's go back into drums only for a second. You know me, I don't like to listen to in solo all the time, but. That's great. Without. With. Love it. Great tool. Great, great tool. Honestly, pretty, it's a pretty darn good tone as far as body's concerned. And the reason why we have the second is for this. Let's put an EQ after it, and I want to hear, I'm going to use some crazy high pass. Listen to the top end. See most of the distortions in this area. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, uh, let's go here and get an EQ in reverse, go to the six because it has a low pass. And I've gone up to, on my sans up one, I got up to about 217 here. Let's do the opposite. Let's go, let's go sharp. See, what's interesting about this now Look at the level of the bass. It's brought it down a couple of dB, maybe three dB maximum. But all that top end information, which gives us all that ping, ping, ping. Pretty evil bass tone now. So what I've done is I've created this crazy bass tone by getting the bottom end only from the one DI and the second one with the Sans app. So the bottom end is always there and always consistent. I like DIs in general for bottom end. Um, when you're using amps, obviously they have tons of personality. We don't have an amp here, we only have a DI. But if we had an amp, I would use that for the top end, for the personality that brings out all of that part of the bass that you love. But the DI, usually, not always, is usually recorded with less distortion, has less second and third harmonics or any of that stuff that coming from, you know, other pieces of equipment. It's the cleanest source and using my best way of getting bottom end. I love it, but I want it to be more of what it is now. So let's do the same thing. I'm gonna use our old friend multiband, but first of all, I'm gonna control going into it. So we're gonna get an REQ. It's cheap and cheerful, does the job. I like the way it sounds, it's basic. We're gonna go at 65 or 60 and just do a soft roll off. So there's gonna be some 60 in there, but it's just getting out of the way of the kick. So let's have a listen. Cool. Now we're going to go to our multiband. 
choose uh, the MC2. So we're going to do a usual trick. Going to go up to about 250. Take that out. So I'm just going to get the bottom end and compress it like crazy underneath. And bring it back up. So it's even, take it out solo. It's like having my own independent bomb end control. I need a kick drum to be controlled. I don't want a kick drum hard, soft, hard, soft, too dynamic. I want, to, I want that kick drum when it punches, I want it to hit really hard. I want to hear the solidness of it. I don't necessarily want it to sound overly triggered. I'm not, I'm not big into that sound, even though you'll see that I, that I do use a sample on this song. I start with the core kick drum. I'll look at what this, the song needs and I'll take, I'll start with an EQ and I'll, comp I'll at a little high end, you can see on this song, I dug away 1,000, 1K, so let's call, let's call it 1K. Dug out, add a little high end, add some bottom in, because when you're playing this fast stuff, sometimes it's just slappier. So I take the kick drum, I'll EQ it a little bit, brighten it up on this, this occasion. Uh, compressor, um, using the stock Digi compressor, of course. I don't want to hit it too hard. If I look at here, so, it's not overly hitting it. If I, if I, let me see when I take the bypass off. It's not suffocating it. It's just kind of controlling the attack a little bit. And you'll notice in a second that it's, I'm not just going through one compressor. I'm just go, I'm starting with the first channel, which is the kick drum channel, and adding a little control. And then once I uh, get a control that I, I kind of like, I go down and I bust this to a kick sub. And I put a second compressor on it. It maybe has a couple different settings. Maybe the threshold's different. Maybe the attack's different. Because to me, the beauty of compression is when you have a sound, and a sound happens, and then it goes away really fast. If you compress a sound, and you use a, a little bit of a slower release, it makes your s sound sustain longer. So if you have a kick drum that's tick, 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 it, if you can get it to go tick, tick, a, a little meatier, it'll have a meatier sound. So that's that's why I use compression as well. B besides the controlling it, the governor of it, I like to uh, add a little bit a smoothness, a depth to it, which you get from more kind of analog gear. Compressors, old tube compressors do it a lot because their releases are slower. So a lot of times I'll use a, a, a variety of EQs, but I'm using the digi ones here. So, so I'm not digging out a lot on this. I'm basically just adding some bottom and then adding some top, but I'm doing it twice. So I'm going EQ, and I'm going into a compressor. So basically, it's compressing, but it's also controlling my EQ a little bit. Going into another EQ, because I didn't think there was enough high end, so I'm adding a little bit more high end, and then I'm going to a final compressor here. And uh, release is 80, where was my first release? Let's see, well, that's the same, I'm kind of using the same trick. I work on this kick on its own for a while, and then I'll work on the snare, and I kind of build it, and then eventually I'll go back and I'll adjust a little bit once I put the whole kit in. Because here's the thing, when you have it soloed, it's never going to sound like this. And you have to understand, it's a couple step process. It's not always like, oh, you mac get this kick like this and you walk away. No, you get it like this and then you work and you work on other elements. If you look at these bass, you see they're all solidly hot. To me, a lot of times, sometimes I'll even go hotter than this. To me, you got to get the highest level into these machine to get the best quality back out. Because it, to me, when I get a track from someone with, with, a, with a low bass, it just, it, I can never get that fullness and the bigness and the wideness. So to me, you have to slam it. You gotta, you gotta get as loud as you can. Um, I go into these with compressors as well. So to me, I'm already committing to 
uh, if you look here, it's pretty solid. It's 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 got a it's not, there's a lot of not a lot of dynamics, but the song doesn't have a lot of dynamics. So I start with compression because compression is is what I do. That's what I love. Compressors all along the wall, distressors or retros or Jeff Daking. Um, um, my favorite one, the Alltech 322. Um, so I will compress going in, and, and you'll you'll notice that too. And because of that, I get to, I have to do less work later. It's it it's to me it's like the more I can do that, the more f fun I can have with mixing, and the less I have to do with overall make creating the sound. To me, I want to create the sound going into this thing. For ease, I will bust to a bass sub, and you'll see I'll put a little EQ. Okay, what it's lacking? Wow, I put a there's a lot of bottom end lacking there, a lot of high end. So basically, I didn't like the mid range, so I kind of cranked it up. Then I'll go to a compressor, same thing. I'll uh, turn it up, I'll adjust the threshold back and forth, figure out what I like. And in the end, it looks like I needed more bottom end and had too much clink. So then I'll just take this bass and I'll just adjust levels up and down until I find something that I like. And obviously, that I listen to the drums with it. The big thing for me too is I like when the kick drum and the bass kind of match a little bit so they're kind of cohesive. In a faster song like this, it, it's a little different. You, I have a clickier kick so uh, you might not notice it as much, but <clears throat> if they're punching together, the whole bottom end and the fullness will, will, will be larger because of that. Uh, this is without any effects, uh, EQ or compression. <laughs> Uh, we're sending that to our maximizer to tie it in with the drums and have it all like kind of glued together that way. Well, let's see what we did with this bass because you know it sounds good. Does it you know will it cut through enough in the mix and is it low endy enough or whatever? So you can see we're taking a little bit of this clank out and a little bit of more top end. <laughs> And uh, some lows and some some uh, some low mids. Yeah, this one it's just e just EQ and uh, and compression to to smooth this out and give it a little more girth and even more compression. It's so easy for some of these notes to kind of disappear in, in, in the sea of guitars and with uh, double kicks and, and everything around that we, uh, you know, we, we just use compression to, to, get it, to, to, to get it to be real solid down in there with uh, especially the sample kicks. We're, we're looking at a lot of, a lot of low end push uh, that goes together. The low end of the bass, the, the, the lows of the bass and the kicks and the guitars, they all have to work together. And I don't ever really do this, but I'm just using it as a, to, to, illu to illustrate a point. I have this, uh, this multiband compressor here to show us the three sections, the three sonic bands that I feel things have to work in. Um, all of them together, they, they don't really do anything. As you can see, each one of them, uh, aside from this one, they're all on. Uh, they're all like set to no compression. But if you uh, solo this low end guy here. You can hear just, you know, the, the low end of the kick and the bass and the, you know, all, all the low end information is balanced down there and you can still hear it as a song. It kind of sounds like you're hearing something through a door, maybe, or, or but it's still like the song. It still makes sense to you, even though you can't hear anything else besides this low stuff from 300 hertz down. Let's listen to the the high bit here. So this.
the same thing here. You know, you have the, the very top of the guitars, the cymbals, and, and the, just the sibilance of the vocals um, working together. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that's the kind of things I'm listening for. Never like this, because that doesn't make any sense to actually listen to it like that. Or maybe it does to you and not to me. Um, but that's what I'm listening for when I'm listening to the whole thing. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun to do to be able to show three completely different approaches. Thank you ever so much to Auric Wild for your incredible talent. And of course, Mr. Cameron Webb, two great friends, two wonderful mentors for all of us here. And please, as ever, leave a bunch of comments and questions below and let us know how you tame the low end on your kick and bass guitar. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing and I'll see you all again very soon. <laughs>